I want to go straight to the host of Power Play, Evan Solomon. He's in Ottawa. Evan, what the heck is going on here? Well, I've seen it all now. Um, <laughs> the Liberals have now decided to make a conservative motion to start a committee investigating uh, the controversies surrounding the Canadian student grant or the WE controversy, as probably Canadians now know it, into a confidence motion. And now, if you're watching, you might think, wait a second, let me go back to my civics class in high school. Isn't a confidence motion usually a matter of supply or money? The speech in the throne is more of a symbolic one, but anytime governments vote to appropriate and spend money, those are matters of confidence. Yes, but suddenly the Liberals are saying, no, this committee is going to take up so much time. We can't govern if this committee can call witnesses that if you try to put this there, we will make it a matter of confidence. In other words, if the Conservatives get the support of the other opposition parties, Canada is back into a snap federal election. Over what, you may ask? Over a committee. Now, uh, just to be fair, the Liberals prorogued Parliament. They stopped Parliament mm -hmm. in the summer. We remember that. For six weeks, that cut the work of all the committees who were investigating the WE charity. Now they're back, finance, ethics, the lobby commissioner, the ethics commissioner, they're investigating. But the Conservatives and the NDP have wanted to say, OK, we'll take all those committees and we'll make one super committee and we'll make that investigate. Then the Liberals pushed back. So the NDP said, look, here's a compromise position. We'll have one committee, but we won't investigate Sophie Gregoire Trudeau or Margaret Trudeau. We don't need to interfere in the personal lives because that's what the Liberals originally said. What are you doing? So they said, OK, we won't do that. The Conservatives wanted to call the committee an anti-corruption committee. The Liberals didn't like that name. They thought it was obviously an exercise in partisanship. So then today, Aaron O'Toole said, look, yep. I'm going to recraft we'll my motion. Yeah. I'm going to make it not a confidence motion. And I won't call it a cor corruption. And Pablo Rodriguez has just said, and I think this is the line that will be quoted, he said, you write a book about Frankenstein, you can call it Cinderella, and it's still about Frankenstein. Well, I think the opposition thinks there is a monster in this story. I don't know if there is or not, but this is a really interesting game of political chicken. I, I don't know there's any constitutional justification for setting up a committee as a reason for a confidence motion, but the stakes have just gone from here to... I don't know. They're, they're somewhere up Your there. Your nine now. foot ceiling. Yeah. So this is a moment. This is a moment. And I and I do want to ask you, is this the way, Evan, a minority government works where if the government doesn't like something, they can prorogue parliament, they can filibuster committees, they can call for confidence motions. Is that typical in a minority government? Look, uh, minority governments oscillate between being very cooperative and getting things done. Some minority governments in Canadian history, uh, you go back to the Lester B. Pearson government, have been unbelievably productive. And, and the Harper governments, even this government has been very productive in the pandemic. So they can be very productive. Uh, by the same token, they can be incredibly and very quickly divisive and partisan because the goal of the opposition is obviously to try to uh, take down the government often. So look, this will all hinge on the NDP. They have propped up this Liberal government to extract other issues like um, paid sick leave. And uh, we'll see what the NDP responds to this. It is just, from Canadians, they might be bonkers. Over a committee that was doing its work before the government prorogued, they're going to go to an election. So it's a little curious that the Liberals who have campaigned on transparency are uh, you know, filibustering this committee, prorogue parliament, and now are making this a confidence motion. That's a pretty curious way to develop transparency. Now, the liberal position is this. We've given 5,000 documents. The prime ministers testified. The former finance ministers testified. The deputy ministers, the chief of staff. We've done everything. Now all they're doing is trying to squeeze more juice out of a partisan lemon to make us look like we're corrupt. And we've done everything possible. The opposition says, nice try. There's still juice in that lemon. Unredact the documents. There's testimony that we want to get. Look, just so people know from a nonpartisan level, the opposition has every legislative right as the opposition to hold the government's feet to account on matters of spending. That's what the committees are doing. And the committees 
are in a minority government controlled by the opposition. The liberals are saying, we've proposed a counter committee. And this is important for people to understand. They have proposed a counter committee that would be able to investigate all pandemic spending, including things involving the we situation. But in their proposal, the liberals would control that committee. That is not usually the way it works in a minority government. They don't have control of committees. So that is why the opposition is saying, nice try. You're looking like you're proposing a committee, but we're not on. You can't control the referees. We do. So, boy, I am amazed we are here. We have stumbled towards what is a shocking and surprising potential confidence vote on this motion that Aaron O'Toole put forward. And right now, uh, anything could happen. I'm really intrigued to see what the NDP thinks. So am I. And I want to ask you really quickly. I know you've got to go, and i got to go too. But our friend Nick Nanos today in the Globe and Mail, he said, this just goes to show the Liberals' positioning, that they're not afraid to call a snap election. Do you agree with Nick? Do you think the Liberals feel that confident about or, or going into the mm-hmm. polls or heading to the polls that, that, that they, would, they would win? Yeah, let me just say two things. I never have to go when we're chatting. I could talk about politics all day, which I'm <laughs> happy to do. So, but yeah, I think Nick is uh, Nick's point is a strong one, which is the Liberals believe that the we scandal, which knocked ten points off their polling, uh, is over, and that they believe that this is the old maxim. It's about the economy, stupid which is the old Bill Clinton maxim. Now they're saying it's about the pandemic, stupid. And they believe that the conservatives are overplaying their hand on this we charity issue. And they believe that if there's an election, their performance overall in this, they're willing to bet on it. But you get punished for calling an election so fast in the middle of a pandemic. And uh, I'm not sure who's to blame here. Nick may well be right, but I don't think anybody predicted that this we controversy which has gone up and gone down, would become an existential uh, vote right now, a vote of confidence on a committee structure. And and I don't know if I've ever, ever seen uh, a vote of confidence over the striking of an opposition committee. It just, there's no constitutional uh, history that I know where that rises to the matter of a confidence motion. I just don't see it. And uh, it's very hard to justify for the government elevating this to a confidence motion. Just, I, I'm, I'm furiously looking back in history. I just have never seen this before. Charlie Angus said, uh, dumb scandal, dumb response. Maybe that kind of sums it up. Oh, my goodness. Okay, uh, Evan, and the day is still young. Evan Solomon, thank you so much for chatting with us and clarifying things, kind of, and we look forward to seeing you later today.